Welcome to the third devlog of Light the Dark, my game project in Unity. Here in Italy we are in the third lockdown from the beginning of the pandemic and the situation is very exhausting. Programming this game helps me a lot also in this sense because it helps me to escape from reality that can be scary. During those weeks I introduced a lot of new features regarding the first of the fears, the enemies of the game. Let's see them together. I started by spawning some blue spheres outside the safe area and far away from the position of Bree. I divided the circle area into four sectors and I understood in which sector she was to spawn the enemy, alias the sphere, in the opposite region. I created a small script to move them towards Brie. In each frame, the spheres change their direction to always reach the target, no matter how hard I try to avoid them. I limited the maximum number of enemies present in the scene to avoid the creation of an infinite army. The enemies of the game are Bree's darkest fears. The reason why Bree is in this place is related to those fears. The first of them is Rachno, an intimidating giant spider. I designed Rachno in Blender, following a tutorial that you will find in the description and changing a bit the final aspect. I am very glad about how it looks. I brought Rachno in Unity and substituted the sphere smash with its one. It is far better to have some spiders instead of a bunch of poles chasing the main character. The next step is to properly program the grass character interaction. Before going on, I arrived at a point where the lag was not manageable anymore. If I click on the stats bar, Unity will open a small window where I can quickly check the performance of the game. In this case, I saw that Unity played the scene at nearly 30 frames per second, without anything moving and with the game in edit mode. The reason was the very high number of vertices present, 4.9 million. The grass mesh used up to this point utilized too many resources. By removing some of the grass objects from the scene, the situation restores and Unity reaches more than 300 FPS. The solution was only one. Update the grass mesh. This is the new design. In terms of performance, there is no comparison. Now the game easily surpasses 250 FPS, and even in presence of enemies, everything moves smoothly. Then I come across a big issue regarding the grass character interaction. The goal was to create a tramped area not only around Bree, but also around all the enemy present. And the problem was that shaders works with a fixed number of inputs, while the number of enemies in the scene is not fixed. To solve it, I create 8 variables in input of the shader, each one representing the position of one character. If less than 8 enemies are present, the missing variables are set to a very large value outside the visible region. What is the problem with this solution? I can't have more than 8 enemies on the scene at the same time, and this is very limiting. If you have a suggestion to solve the problem differently, please write it in the comment section. It's funny seeing that every time I work with shaders, I end up messing with something, and the results are really unexpected. In this case, I created the rings of Saturn and a dynamic painting of Pablo Picasso. I adjusted the script and I observed the herd of spiders in action. I'm in doubt whether to put a shadow under the enemy meshes. A possible alternative could be to create a smog particle effect that follows Rachno, but my girlfriend, aka the project manager of this game, didn't like the idea, so for now I leave it in this way. Let's see how I animated Rachno. Using Blender, I linked the spider mesh with a set of bones connected in a flexible skeleton. By moving one of these bones, I obtain a realistic movement of all the others. 
For instance, by shifting the bone right here, you can see that all the leg reacts accordingly, and this happens for all the bones of the skeleton. Thanks to this method, called rigging, I was able to create two simple animations. The idler, played when Rakno is fixing one point, and the movement, quite self-explanatory. Here I took the control of one enemy to show you the animations in action. In this situation, I don't blame Bree to be scared by these monsters. Since I really enjoyed the creation of the two animations, I made a third one that is played when Rakno enters the safe area. It remembers me of when an animal is ready to attack or want to defend its territory. With the proper audio, it's perfect. The safe area is the region illuminated by the fire, where Bree can freely move, trying to escape from her inner demons. Outside this area, there is darkness, the unknown, the death region. If you try to get away in this direction, nothing happens, and this is a problem. For this reason, I introduced the game over screen. It is very simple, there is the fire in the center, the game over text and two options to restart the challenge or quit the game. Using the up and down keys, it's easy to pass from a text to the other, and the selected option is a bit brighter to be easily distinguishable. To make Rakno a treat, I introduce four new attack animations that activate when the fear is close to Bree. Each time the enemy wants to attack, a random number is generated to select only one of these animations. During the attack, if a part of the leg of the spider enters in contact with Bree, the fire reduces its brightness, and so the safe area becomes smaller. When the safe area shrinks too much, it's game over. The problem with this forced design was that the spider stops moving every time he wants to attack and this makes escaping from it too easy. The solution was to divide the animation controller into two layers, one dedicated to the movement and one to the fight part. In this way, the spider can attack even when it's moving and stop whenever it's necessary. To make the scene more realistic, I also add four different reactions to Bree, according to the direction of the hit received and I program a little shaking effect of the camera every time the spider attack. The only way to overcome spears is to fight them. In Light the Dark, Brie is able to create objects with her mind. She doesn't know why. Maybe it is connected to the fact that she can see without her eyes. Who knows? By pressing the left mouse key button, a transparent giant hand starts to grow in size. I used a force field shader for the hand, and it works quite well. It looks like a mental ability. By releasing the button, the hand hits the ground, killing the enemies below. But uh, if the hand is always one shot one kill, there is no reason to wait for the full hand growth, because even the tiny one is deadly. Hence, I give a life bar to the spiders and a damage variable to the hand. The more the hand is big, the more its damage is high. If the damage is not deadly, but quite important, the spider will be literally crushed. In that case, a new animation is started, avoiding its movement for a few seconds. Indeed, it's quite funny to squash spider with your giant hand. I leave you a moment to appreciate all my efforts. I think this is enough for this devlog. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. More devlogs are coming.